this uh, next reading um, is a beautiful text. Um, but I think in order to get the full benefit of it, we should continue to reflect a bit more on this gift of forgiveness and new life. Because it starts off, you see, none of us lives for himself and no one dies for himself. No man is an island. Famous book, also something, and then Merton used the title uh, in a book of his, Thomas Merton, you see. And so, um, but I just want to read a few of these where you see this notion, you see. This is... Uh, Actually, I think I even want to go further back. Uh, no, I guess this is good enough. You see, repentance is a gift. I can't repent by myself. I have to be moved by God to repentance. Listen to this text from Jeremiah 24, 7. And I gave to you, or I give to you, Natati, lev, a, a heart, to know me. See how biblical that is? It doesn't say I give you a mind to know me. I give you a heart to know me. Because the heart in man, as the biblical world looks at it, is the place of direct relationship to God. There's nothing in there. We keep trying to cover it over to avoid the responsibility <coughs> 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 <clears throat> we keep covering it over to avoid the responsibility of this direct contact with God. But it's in the heart, you see. I gave you a heart so that you could know me. You see? Because I am Adonai and you will be to me a people and I will be to you a God. Because you will come back to me with all your heart. There's even a song about that, right? Come back to me with all your heart. Shuvu. Eli bakol levam. Levam. You see? It's a... Uh, come back. Sin, we're wandering away into darkness. And God is saying, come back. Shuvu. Shuvu. Uh, and here's the other one then uh, from uh, Zechariah. Do not be like your ancestors, that is, like your fathers, to whom the former prophets prophesied. The Lord of hosts has dealt with us according to our needs. Now, one more. Uh, this is very Jewish piety, okay? When Moses was receiving the law up on the top, of the mountain, the people rebelled. And so uh, Moses uh, pleaded, okay? Uh, first, M uh, Moses said, well, if you're going to block them out, block me out. No, only those who have sinned. Then Moses continued to plead with the Lord. And finally, the Lord accedes to Moses' request that he go with his people. This request, too, which you have made. So he forgives them, and he says, I'll continue to go with them through the desert, okay? Then, uh, there is this commentary of Rashi, this famous uh, medieval Jewish commentator. It is so beautiful and gives you an insight into our forefathers' piety. Rashi writes, God is speaking. To Moses. You see, because when Moses prays, what does he say? Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to whom you promised this land. You can't leave us here in the desert. Think of them. Think of their merits, their fidelity. Don't think of us. We're jerks. Think of them. That's called the zakut, avot, the merits of the fathers. Now Rashi says, the time has arrived when you shall see all of my glory, so much as I will allow you to see. And according as I wish, therefore, I find it necessary to teach you a set form of prayer. God is going to teach Moses how to pray. Just now, when you felt the need to pray for mercy on Israel's behalf, 
you besought me to remember the merits of the patriarchs, and you thought that if the merits of the patriarchs are exhausted, there is no more hope. I will teach you uh, to cause all the attributes of my goodness to pass before you on the rock or you're placed in the cave to teach you the formula when praying for my mercy, even though the merits of the patriarchs should be exhausted. Do you hear it? God is going to teach us more prayers so that if all the merits of the patriarchs are exhausted, I'll give you another prayer that's never exhausted. You pray this and you'll always have my mercy. Do you see who God is? Do you see it? So, Adonai came down in a cloud and took his stand with him there. And he called on the name of Adonai. He called on his own name. Adonai passed before his face and he called out, Adonai, Adonai. And this is the famous thing, Hanun the, the Rahum. Huh? Rahum the Hanun. Uh, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, great in hesed and emet, keeping hesed for a thousand generations, lifting off wickedness, rebellion, and sin, and not declaring the guilty guiltless, visiting the sins of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third generation and the fourth. But just look at the difference. A generation is, say, 70 years. So he keeps his chesed for 70,000 years. The other for a couple of generations, and then it's over. You see? Uh, so, uh, according to Rashi, God gave us that prayer so that when we've exhausted the merits of our forefathers because we're so bad, God gives us this other prayer which will always work because we're just saying to God, Adonai, Adonai, El, Rachum, Vachanun. He can't resist that. And you told us to say that. Do you understand? It's, it's, uh, it's not just emotional. You see, it's an insight into God. See, when we're told to love God, that doesn't mean salute. It means love. Okay. So that's what we have for this um, uh, reading from Romans, short one, but it's in that context, you see. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for himself. No one dies for himself or you know, for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we live for the Lord. And if we live, we live unto the Lord, to data. And if we die, we die unto the Lord. Our whole life goes to the Lord. You see, we're never alone. You know, I'm lonely, I'm abandoned. The great saints feel that. And that's why it's such a huge suffering. Because where's God? And some of the great saints, look at St. Therese. For years, she was an atheist. Everything was dark. There's no God. I'm gonna, they're gonna die, I die, they're going to put me in a hole in the ground. That's it all but a tiny pilot light in the depth of her spirit, which burned so powerfully and so strongly that it kept her going and saved millions of atheists. She went through it for them. You see? And that's None of us lives for, for himself unto one's, himself. None of us dies just unto himself or their, herself. And so, you see, uh, this is why Christ died, and came to life. That he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. He's passed through death. He's the Lord of the dead. And he deals with them. He purifies them. And what is that purification? A very holy person whom I know, whom the Lord brought to visit purgatory, described it this way. We're there, it's dark you know, and his degrees of darkness. But the heart of it is, we see our sin in its true reality. How awful it is. 
how rebellious, how ugly, how ungrateful it is. But we see it through the eyes of Jesus Christ. And therefore, we see it through the eyes of mercy. And we feel so bad. We pray, we, we repent, we move. And uh, you see, now the saints, that happens to them in this life. How many times do you read in the lives of the saints, oh, I'm so sorry for my sins, I weep over my sins. I'm so sorry for my sins. You say, your sins? If you're weeping over yours, okay, I can understand. Camillus de Lellis. Or maybe Augustine. But Therese, or even Teresa of Avila, she had too many tea parties in the front part of the parlor. But, I mean, she wept over her sin. She was having the experience of purgatory in this life. She saw what her sins really were. And so, but she saw them through the eyes of the mercy of Jesus Christ. And so she wept. We'll all weep. To think of that mercy when my sins are that bad. We weep. And we get purified and purified and purified. And then we go see God. You see? And that's the gift. So none of us lives for himself. None of us dies unto himself. You see? We belong to the Lord who died and came to life that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. So he's the Lord of the dead and he's Lord of us. So, if we put that together with the theme of this liturgy, what do we get? You want to be forgiven? Forgive. Just start. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. I don't know how deep this is, you know, but I know this much. In the old Missal, the Latin Missal, in the back, I have it in my computer. I should have brought it out, but I forgot. Um, there's a prayer for the gift of tears. And it says, God, you can get water out of a rock. So surely you can get tears out of my heart. Let me weep over my sin. Which is a prayer for that vision that I mentioned of seeing, you know, we're rebelling against God. Besides how big and powerful and strong and upright he is, how loving and merciful he is, and we're rebelling against him. And there Jesus is, still with the marks of the cross by which we were saved. Well, we weep. And that weeping purifies us. You know, uh, for uh, Simeon, the new theologian, the first theologian, practically, as far as we know, to speak about baptism in the Spirit. And he says the preparation for baptism in the Spirit is the gift of tears. we got to weep for our sins. They are so bad. But if we saw how bad they were without seeing it through the eyes of God's mercy, we'd be finished. So that's one dimension of this text. You see, none of us lives unto himself. None of, nobody dies unto himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Huh? And therefore, uh, whether we live or die, we're unto the Lord, we belong to the Lord, we're of the Lord. For this Christ died and rose, that he might be the Lord of the living and the dead. Amen.